Um, so does it work? That's the question you're asking. We'll come to that in a moment. Uh, I'm John Twiddle. I'm the, as has been said, I'm the manager of the EPC. Uh, this is a picture of our equipment uh, performance centre. We uh, were staffed by six condition monitoring specialists, one of whom is in the audience today, that's Seth. Uh, and we provide 365 days a year monitoring of our, of our sites. We're not 24 hours, we don't work overnight. Um, the, the kind of things we're aimed at looking for are slow developing faults, as, as, uh, as Mark said, things that are just emerging from the, um, from the data. And we have two centres, uh, one at Ferrybridge, this is pictured, and one in Glasgow who look after our uh, renewables fleet. Um, I've drawn all the data in a cloud. We're not really keeping it in a cloud, but the data is there. Apparently, that, that's the new way to keep data in a cloud. Uh, we, one of our objectives is um, uh, turning data into information. We have lots and lots of data floating around in the uh, in the fleet. Uh, our task is to convert that data into useful information. Um, some data sources there: uh, two two Pi servers, uh, a blade vibration monitoring system, Buran for our vibration monitoring needs. System one also for vibration monitoring. Um, so we do a routine uh, turbine vibration analysis and diagnostics in the EPC. Uh, things like LD66 blade management. Some of the things you, you'll see here are um, kind of issues that, um, that we've been talking about the last couple of days. You'll see how relevant this has all been for me. Um, combustion dynamics analysis on gas turbines, boiler temperature monitoring, creep analysis, safety case management and so on. Um, one of our main tasks is cycle watch and, and smart signal model based condition monitoring as just described by Mark. Anomaly detection, wind turbine condition monitoring, asset life assessment is our assets, are our assets still fit for operation? Uh, and we're also getting involved in, in research and development on, uh, on things like blade crack detection. Again, that's been a, um, there's been some good presentations on that um, uh, during the course of this, uh, of this uh, forum. Uh, torsional vibration, again, wind forecasting and renewables asset management. We've got all that information. If we've converted it using the software, how do we turn it into value? We displace third parties. Sorry to the Eon people that are here in the audience. Uh, MAN, uh, another group who's, who we've taken over the um, condition monitoring from on our um, uh, gas storage site. We increase the availability of plant. We manage safety cases. We manage issues. We try to avoid uh, uh, unplanned shutdowns. We contribute to reduced insurance premiums. I think Don's gone, perhaps. He might not have been happy to hear that. Uh, but uh, as, as Don was saying, a good asset management strategy combined with condition monitoring can help us to reduce our insurance premiums by a significant sum. Uh, and early detection of potential failures and estimated, uh, our estimated value of catches is greater than, uh, than 1 million. When we first got this um, smart signal system in, we'd been hit by a number of large and catastrophic failures. So it was an obvious thing to do to bring in a, a condition monitoring system that would help av avoid those large and cat catastrophic failures. As they slip from the memory a little, we increasingly have to um, establish and demonstrate our value. And by keeping a value and a record of catches and of the areas of value that, uh, that I've demonstrated there, then we can uh, continue our, uh, uh, we can ensure our continued uh, um, role within the SSE uh, Engineering Centre. Oops. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself there. So... In terms of smart signal, uh, we have a timeline that dates back to uh, January uh, 2010, at which point smart signal started hosting uh, Medway Condition Monitoring for us. Medway is a CCGT station down in Kent. Um, after a period of training, a couple of months later, we took over that monitoring ourselves uh, within the group. And then we took over the, um, after further training, we took over the, uh, the management of the system. We brought the system in house and we began monitoring our Fiddler's Ferry coal station. Uh, then um, we rapidly ramped up the amount of um, plants and um, wind farms that we were monitoring with uh, Toddleburn, Fairbridge, Peterhead, Keedby, our gas storage station. We added CycleWatch to our, uh, our portfolio, uh, which is still hosted by, by, by Smart Signal. That the CycleWatch system looks at run-ups on gas turbines and compares them run by run and looks for uh, anomalies between run to run. Uh, and then we extended our wind to the point where just in the last month, we've got all our wind turbines now covered by the, uh, the smart signal system. Uh, coming up in a couple of months' time, we've got a, 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 an upgrade to the new version of smart signal, the latest version being 5.5. And looking ahead, we've got a new multi-fuel uh, plant built um, close to Ferry Bridge, which we'll be bringing into our uh, um, scope, and uh, a new CCG at Great Island, which we'll also be monitoring. So, processes for monitoring, we had to establish a process 
Uh, as Mark said, no false alarms. I kind of winced at that because there are some, some, some false alarms. Not, as he says, they're not really false alarms. Everything tells you something about your data. Uh, we go through this process, which basically is designed to, to eliminate the, um, the non-critical alarm, shall we say. Um, so the critical alarms are the things we need to tell site about immediately. So we, we get on the phone to site and we tell them you've got an issue there. Maybe they go and look at it and, and find something. Maybe they go and look at it and say, well, it's okay, we know about that, we can manage that. That's great. Um, some things we see something that's slowly developing and we'll, we'll talk to site and say we've seen this, uh, we're going to keep an eye on it, you should probably keep an eye on it too. Or sometimes we need to filter out something as Mark said, uh, if something is due to um, an unmodeled ambient condition or a model error or a change in the operating point where the, the model no longer recognises the, um, recognises the pattern of data, then we, we need to do that as well. And basically that's what that left hand side process does. We have a very much simple process for our sites, three blocks. We tell them something, we let them to acknowledge that we've told them something, and eventually after they've had a look at it or, or considered what the issue might be, we like some feedback because that helps us to refine our systems. It helps us learn about the data patterns that we're seeing. Maybe it's something we can use uh, in the future. Maybe it's something we can apply to another site. It's how we refine and develop. So what does this mean in terms of workload? On average each month uh, with Baran, uh, we also, Baran is a kind of sideshow in, in terms of this um, presentation because we're focusing on the smart signal but we look at 100, 1,025 Baran alarms um, we maybe um, notify send phone notifications to site about high vibration levels or other issues oil well or or something uh, that they need to know about smart signal incidents we action 2,460 remember remember when we've got 1,026 assets and a lot of those are wind turbines we see a lot of incidents when the wind blows hard um, from that 2,460, we send out 36 notifications to site to say you've got something that you probably need to look at. Um, we might find that we have um, model maintenance to do to adjust for changing operating points, changing ambient condition. We probably do 34 asset maintenance actions or model maintenance actions during the course of a typical month. From those 36 notifications, six catches. So that's six things that we know about the site, or we know about the performance of the, the plant that we didn't know before. Maybe that's uh, a, an, an asset that needs to be looked at or addressed, or maybe it's a faulty tag, or maybe it's just a, um, um, a drifting thermocouple or something as trivial as that. But we define a catch as the site come back to us, acknowledge that we found something, and, and send us an email to say what they did about it. I suspect there are more catches than six. Four minutes. And because site don't always tell us everything. We write um, 14 reports and, and publish those to, to give it a, 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 a kind of step-by-step -step approach to, um, um, to keeping up to date with, uh, with what assets are ongoing or what, uh, uh, what issues are current. Oh, that sounds good. Where's the catch? Here are some catches. Uh, this one is a generator collector, outlet air temperature, indicating high and smart signal. This is on a CCGT. Um, typical operation temperature of the generator collector is 55 degrees. Uh, and it was ramping up as you see on this chart. This is a typical chart that we see of, a, of an incident in smart signal. Um, so we see, um, I don't quite know where the red button is. Where's the red button? The top. The top. I'm lost. Oh, I see. Okay, so these, these red indications here tell us that the, um, the, S, the, the actual measured value has stepped outside the, uh, the estimate threshold around, around the estimate. Uh, we see so uh, something has always stepped outside here and it's ramping up, so we're concerned about this. We talked to the site, and the site said it was due to the, in the collector housing at the end of the generator. The collector housing houses the brushes and the generator slip rings. So the potential outcome, we could have had overheating uh, carbon brushes, damage to slip rings, possible removal of generator required. We're looking at the potential worst case scenarios here. Full station outage required for any remedial work as the site's uh, combined cycle and it's not capable of operating without the steam turbine. So potentially a big loss there. Um, investigation showed the, the door hatch, the air inlet filter is not fully sealed. Uh, and this was allowing inset, inlet air to bypass the collector housing and resulting in a temperature rise at the collector outlet. So the defect was corrected by site and the site said actually this, this could have been an issue for us. So what they did was they set up an, an actual alarm on the, on the, uh, the particular thermocouple. Uh, to prevent that occurring again in future. So now they've got an alarm set and, and smart signal is kind of redundant looking at this particular tag. But it's not, this tag on the, the air collector housing is probably not a critical tag, not something that somebody will be looking at typically. Um, 
in, in terms of the, the alarms and, and, and set points on the control system, on the control, on the DCS. Um, so we see the value here of looking at all the data as a pattern and looking for small things that are, are changing, which might be the indicators of, of big problems to come. Uh, just a couple more quick ones, because I know I'm running short of time. This is on a main boiler feed pump signal. Um, so here we see uh, the speed signal actually was changing and, and, and changing quite rapidly. So it was throwing up a large number of incidents here. And when we look at the, um, I believe that's the oil pressure tag there, we found that um, one of the, um, the, um, the, the control valve had been failing and it had been swinging and operating uh, out of control. So the oil pressure to the, to the bearings was fluctuating. Uh, here we have down here the um, report made by the, the site in, in the, um, the online logbook. So we could see where they'd, they'd picked up our notification and uh, got in touch with Flow Server where the, uh, the contractor's looking after that pump uh, and they uh, planned a repair. And you can see here where the, where the repair happens then everything goes back to normal again after that. So th this is the smart signal incident and there was a period of time to plan a repair and that was done it looks like without even bringing the, uh, the machine offline. Uh, finally, just a quick quick example. This one was um, a 500 megawatt generator stator. Uh, the temperature rise, we picked up a temperature rise here and then suddenly it started to rapidly increase. Uh, and we phoned up the, uh, the, um, the operators and they went and checked it out. And it was a problem with a, a control valve on the stator coolant cooler. So the remedial action was taken and again the temperatures then dropped back down to the uh, to the estimate, uh, estimated levels. And we can see from this one how well typically uh, the, the smart signal model tracks the, uh, tracks the actual. So thank you very much. Questions at the end. Uh, I think a, a general summary is that um, smart signal allows us to, uh, um, to uh, create value in a way that, that we've described. It's a useful way to get, make the most out of your data um, and we're pretty happy with the way it's running and we're looking forward to getting the uh, upgraded software in a month or two. Thank you very much.